grew up in Maine, one of the whitest states in America. Even today, in 2019, Maine is still 94.64% white. In 2001, I married my Jamaican husband, Neil, on the beach in Negril. At our big, tropical, interracial wedding, we hosted over 200 friends and family from all over the world. They were black, white, Asian, gay and straight. And thanks to some island magic and maybe a little bit of Jamaican rum, everybody got along. And they were our people. They, they still are. But Neil and I have been heartened over the years by the way people appear to support our union. And I often wonder why. Are they just trying to show us their anti-racist intentions? Or perhaps they have a mixed marriage in their family and also celebrate Loving Day, the holiday that marks the case in 1967 when interracial marriage finally became legal. Or it could just be that my husband's a very handsome, tall black man, I'm a very white woman, and we don't always blend in. And then there's the Christmas card theory. Folks kind of like our Christmas cards. And like a lot of you, I leave out the real life, messy, complicated stuff and just put pictures of our cute kids in there. And I guess people are kind of curious about the whole interracial, mixed race thing and we're okay with that. This is my family, my tribe, my husband and two sons, our two dogs, and that's Ruby, the black cat that literally rules our home. I spend a lot of time thinking about race and gender, poverty and privilege. In the social entrepreneurial world I live in, we call that intersectionality. And while I can totally geek out over this stuff, honestly, I'm really just interested in the intersection of humans and hearts. We moved down to Florida about a decade ago. Here's our youngest son with his soccer buddies. They're from Florida, Mexico, Ohio, Jamaica and Maine, Ghana, and Indiana. This generation of Southern boys should bring you great hope. The South really is a mixed bag of, of people, and we fit in right away. On any given day, in any given region, you can find bikers, golfers, farmers. There's Jimmy Buffett and reggae fans, often right alongside hip hop and country music fans, all at the same tiki bar. We've got supermercados, lots of black churches, really good barbecue food, and even more phenomenal people. If you turn on the news today, you're going to hear a lot of noise about race wars and racial divisiveness. We refuse to play into this narrative. We can't. We see evidence of positive interracial exchanges every single day in our world. Eight years ago, we created a school for low-income children. The students we serve are predominantly black and brown boys. 12% of our students are homeless. 100% of our students are brimming with potential. When it comes to doing the work with vulnerable children and women and families all across the South, you should see the village that actually shows up every single day. Now, diversity and inclusion work isn't for the faint of heart. And after decades as a trauma social worker turned nonprofit administrator, I developed some really thick skin and thought I had kind of seen it all. But education reform, education reform is an entirely different beast. I'm talking Kerry Washington as Olivia Pope in Scandal, like gladiator level work. And after a valiant run in the education reform arena, I didn't just burn out or have a little midlife crisis, I had a midlife dumpster fire. <sighs> the fire began during what I now refer to as our school turnaround hell years. Our school initially scored an F on the state tests, and we had to get the grade up or risk the entire school getting shut down. 
So we dove all in with our incredible team and our talented teachers, and happily after three years, we're able to bring the score up from an F to an A. We did this while facing relentless obstacles. I didn't sleep more than three hours in a row at night for at least three years. Toxic stress became my normal. So, <clears throat> right on the heels of our school turnaround, I received the devastating news. Your mother has Alzheimer's disease. It's a rapid and aggressive form. The dumpster fire was blazing on all fronts in my life, and I got sick. Skin cancer, shingles, 17 stitches while trying and failing to groom our dog Max with kitchen shears, severe depression and anxiety. Most of my ailments were completely invisible to the outside, so I looked just fine, but I was so far from fine. These pictures here didn't make the Christmas card. <laughs> However, I'm here to tell you that if or when you have a big life crisis, you really should consider having your breakdown in the South. It's true what they say, when you're cracked wide open and everything falls apart, that's where the light gets in. And it's really sunny and warm in the South. People walk and talk slower. They honk less horns. They're kind. And kindness and sunshine can help you heal. I believe at the core, diversity is a celebration of our uniqueness. And inclusion means making people feel connected and comfortable. The South isn't perfect, but it's full of unique people. And people are hospitable in the South, and I believe the world needs more hospitality. So allow me to share five lessons I've learned on diversity and inclusion from the South. Race. No one can or should deny the South's painful history with race and inequality. What is revealing, however, is how the black community and black leaders focus on two things, never forgetting history and forgiveness. Forgiveness is the game changer. The immigrant population is surging all across the South. Spend a weekend in Orlando or Dallas, and you'll see what the new multiracial America is starting to look like. It's brown. And we're allowed to say brown, black, and white in the South because the whole political correctness thing didn't fully catch on. <laughs> At least not in my home. Class. Florida has professionals from all backgrounds that make a living and a fortune in industries like construction and tourism and retirement. We've got the Space Coast. We've got healthcare innovation. Really proud veterans. We kind of have it all. Gated country clubs are often right across the street from trailer parks, which are right across the street from oceanfront mansions and classism completely disappears on two occasions, during any sporting event or at the Cracker Barrel restaurant. <laughs> so it turns out that good biscuits and bacon and football is incredibly unifying. Gender. Southern women are badass on a whole different level. The national gender pay gap is actually smaller in Florida than over 90% of the country. So chivalry isn't even dead down here. In fact, it never totally died. But female CEOs can discuss product launches or fashion if they choose. Women are the future of this state. Nature. Florida has seas full of dolphins, and our pink sandy beaches and sunsets over the Gulf of Mexico can cure almost anything. We also learn in, in the South that Mother Nature can humble you and teach you to watch your back. Gators, fire ants, hurricanes can creep up on you at any time and remind us that Mother Nature is always in charge. 
faith and family. In the South, your people matter. Who and where you worship matters deeply. Folks seem to have more respect for the divine than someone's pedigree or title, and they cherish family time. And their definition of family is really broad and inclusive. A good breakdown is often a great instructor. My final breakdown truths are, we can survive dumpster fires. We can survive a loved one with Alzheimer's. We can survive a whole hell of a lot. So when things fall apart, let them, and then reevaluate everything. Learn to speak your truth with more conviction, and try to live your life with more heart and less ego. And this truth, this is my lightning rod. Working and raising a family shouldn't make women sick, but stories like mine are everywhere. So I've learned it's time for me to double down on my priorities and align them with the legacy that I want to create, a legacy of loving my family well and of advancing impact and female leadership in vastly different ways. You see, the South shows us that kindness and inclusivity can and do exist, and that forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves and forgiveness of one another is the true game changer on our path towards equality. Thank you.